رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأزواجه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين يؤذون المؤمنين والمؤمنات بغير ما اكتسبوا فقد احتملوا بهتانا وإثما مبينا صدق الله العظيم Today without any introduction I would like to go into some of these ahadith because last two days when we went into the introduction then it was only introduction so without inshallah any of those topics let's look at some of the ahadith that will give us some understanding of what we were talking about and especially about the topic that I pointed out yesterday our dealings with each other and dealing with other people whether they are relatives friends or they are people who are far from us people that we never see people that don't like us or we don't like them dealing with all kind of people there are some hadith that will give us some general rulings about it rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this hadith which is in sahih muslim that he asked Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een Atadruna mal muflis Do you know who is bankrupt? He said, Ya Rasulullah Man la dirhama lahu Wala dina Wala mata A person Who does not have no asset, no wealth He lost everything This person became bankrupt Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this person who after having a lot of wealth, after being wealthy person, then he lost all of his wealth and he became bankrupt. In reality, this person is not the real bankrupt. The real bankrupt is the person, مَن يَأْتِي مِنْ أُمَّةِ الْمُفْلِسُ مِنْ أُمَّةِ مَن يَأْتِي يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ بِصَلَاةٍ وَصِيَامٍ وَزَكَاةٍ the real bankrupt is a person of my ummah who would come on the day of Qiyamah with a lot of ibadah. So just as we see that this person here, he was very wealthy. And then he lost his wealth. He worked very hard throughout his life to make his living and to earn as much as he could. And he succeeded. He made a lot. But at the end, something happened in his life Situations changed and he lost everything. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, on the day of Qiyamah some people will come and they have worked very hard in this world for Akhirah. They did not work for dunya. They worked very hard for Akhirah. Ya'ti bi salatin wa siyam wa zakah. This person comes on the day of judgment with a lot of fasting, with a lot of salah and paid zakah and everything. He's perfect with all of these ibadahs. وَيَأْتِي قَدْ شَتَمَ هَذَا وَقَذَفَ هَذَا وَأَكَلَ مَا هَذَا هَذَا وَسَفَكَ دَمَ هَذَا وَضَرَبَ هَذَا He would come. This person has cursed at someone. He has taken the wealth of some people, misused the wealth of people, or used someone's things without the person's permission. Or maybe even worse, a person who may have killed innocent person. 
or a person who has done wrong to others in one way or other. فَيُعْطَى هَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ وَهَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ So when these people would come with their claims, Ya Allah, this person cursed at me once. Ya Allah, this person had backbited me. Ya Allah, this person, he took my wealth. Ya Allah, he took loan from me and he did not return it. Ya Allah, I left it somewhere and he misused it. So people will come with their claims. Of course, on that day, this person will not have anything to pay with except his own rewards. فَيُعْطَى هَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ وَهَذَا مِنْ حَسَنَاتِهِ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, then these people will be given this person's reward. So he has a lot of salah. Salah of one year gone to this person. Salah of another year gone to that person. Ibadah, all the reward of salah is gone, still there are people that have claim against this person. Okay, you take his fasting. You take this Ramadan, you take that Ramadan, you take this nafil. All of this is gone. He has zakat that he has paid. He has sadaqat, charities that he has paid. People are claiming against him. The same thing, that he did this and he did this to me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say now, take his reward. So now these person are taking the reward of his zakat and of his sadaqat. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, This person at the end will be out of reward. He is bankrupt. All of his salah, all of his fasting, all of his zakah, everything is gone. Just imagine what could be the situation of the person. Now we are not talking about a person who is, in our eyes, generally speaking, is not a good person. We are talking about a person who is having reward, mountains of reward through the, his ibadah. He did a lot of work in this world. A lot of charity, a lot of salah, a lot of ibadah. And he was very active in all these you know, Islamic activities. He is very hard working. He sacrificed a lot of his rest. He gets up during the night time. He gives, up, he gives up his work and he goes for salah. He may have lost his job or anything because of that. But, حُقُوقُ ibad. That's the point. When it came to the <coughs> rights of people, he never cared about it. In masjid, this person is backbiting. He is standing in the saf with all the believers in that line, shoulder to shoulder. His heart is full of grudge and hatred against them. He sees the face of a Muslim and he gets upset. Jealousy and hatred. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, at, this, uh, at the end, as this person now became bankrupt, and still there are people who have claims against him. And he has no reward whatsoever. All of that reward is gone. This is a good man. All of his reward is gone. His salah is totally gone. His fasting, Ramadan, ibadah, atikaf, whatever he's doing, everything is gone. His zakat, charity, all the good deeds, everything is gone. All activities, Islamic work, all of this, everything is gone. No more reward. That's it. Totally bankrupt. But unfortunately, still there are people lined up that have claim against him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to those people, he has nothing to pay. You could see that no more rewards, all the rewards are gone. But you can do one thing now, of course, justice has to be taken place. And I can't just tell you there is nothing now, he's bankrupt. There is nothing that you can do anymore. So therefore, you now you have one choice. And that is, because he has done wrong to you, and he has to pay you and he cannot, so now take some of your sins and load it on him. Now, people will start, of course, that will be the greatest offer a person could have on that day. So now, people are taking their sins and loading it on this person. 
Just go into the depth when we say the word sins. Depending on how much wrong this person have done to others, accordingly they will be loading their sins on this person. Now just think for it. Just think for a minute. This good man in this world, who was staying away from sins, as we normally would consider sins, of course he did not stay from sins that are concerning حقوق العباد, but this is a person who never eats haram. This is a person who would not drink haram. This is a person who would not steal. This is the person who would not go to the banks and take loans. This is a person who would not commit zina and adultery. But what is happening now? People are loading their sins on this person. What does this mean? Someone have missed salah in this life. That person is taking those sins of missing the salah, loading it on this person. Someone has stolen something in this world. He gets the sin for it. He takes the sin of stealing and he puts it on that person's shoulder. Someone was having his dealings of riba and interest. He has a lot of those sins. He takes his sins of riba, of using interest, and he puts it on this person. Looks what happens to this good man now. Who had mountains of reward from a'mal salihah from all the good deeds. And me and you looking at him, mashallah, five times, he's up, he's in the front. And mashallah, look at his dress, look at his look, and his everything, perfect. And on that day, this person will be carrying the sins. May Allah forbid, may Allah protect. But it could even be, he could be carrying the sins of zina, of adultery, of stealing, of riba, of everything. Depending on how much wrong he used to do to people. And according the people will be loading their sins. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, this person will end up having mountains of sins. Then he will be thrown in the hellfire. He has all of these sins. You can go to Jannah with these sins. He will be thrown into the hellfire. He will be considered as if he has done all of this. It's not something very simple as we normally take it. Believe me, I think this is a hadith that we may have to just repeat it every day. Every day we just have to just write nothing but this hadith and end the talk. We may even have to write it on a piece of paper and just read it over and over. Because we really don't have, still after hearing it, we may not still understand the depth of this hadith. When we look at our situation, it takes only a second. Only a second. When I just said a word against you and I walked away. And that's it. This is enough to ruin everything. A person spending a life of ibadah and very God-fearing person. You don't see the person into sins. He never enjoyed things of this life because he would like to have life of taqwa. But on the other hand, when he's doing wrong to others, that ruins up everything. And not just ruins it. I think ruining it is a very easy word when it comes to this. Just imagine, God forbid, may Allah protect us. That on the day of judgment, someone, a person from outside, who never came into the masjid, and that person would bring all of his pork and sh- drinking uh, alcohol and everything, and he puts that sin on us. And it is possible. And when we talk against those people normally who are into other lifestyle, we don't even consider it anything that has I mean, has any re- uh, ruling about it, uh, for it in the Sharia, that it's, it's open. Say whatever you want. Once, in the presence of one of the scholars, I don't remember who he was, someone said something against Hajjaj ibn Yusuf. And we, I'm sure everyone knows 
Hajjaj ibn Yusuf heard about him, the most tyrant ruler in the history of Islam. In fact, historians have even said it to this extent that if we ask all the nations of the world to bring the most tyrant person, most tyrant ruler of their history, they can put all of them together, we will win by Hajjaj bin Yusuf. He is enough to go over all of those people and he's, he's going to beat everyone with his tyranny and oppression. A person who has the sins of the blood of some of the Sahaba Ridwanullah, not talk about great tabin like Sayyid ibn Jubayr and other. A person who has the sin of the blood of some of the Sahaba Ridwanullah on his shoulder. Of course, what more can we see? So someone said something against Hajjaj ibn Yusuf. So that scholar said, Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just. He is Al-Adl subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on the Day of Judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make Hajjaj ibn Yusuf pay for all of his wrongdoings. If he doesn't forget, he will make him pay for all of his wrongdoings. And if you say something against Hajjaj ibn Yusuf that is wrong, that something that he has not done, then you will pay Hajjaj bin Yusuf for that too. It's not that only he's going to pay for it, you will have to pay him for whatever wrong you're saying against him too. In another hadith, Rasulullah, and really, this hadith is such that I don't even feel like going to another hadith and just go into this hadith and just look up at the depth of this hadith. But let's look at some other hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in other hadith which is in Bukhari and other books of hadith written on the authority of Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiyallahu anhu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said man kanat lahu mazlimatun li akhihi min ardi aw shay'in a person who have done any wrong to any Muslim brother or sister any wrong to any Muslim in this life, فَلْيَتَحَلَّلْهُ مِنْ الْيَوْمِ That person should use this opportunity of having his life to get the forgiveness for those people or to sell it, settle it between him and that person. Whichever way, you have to pay him for it. However, settle it in this world before that day would come when a person will not have any other method of settling it. إِنْ كَانَ لَهُ عَمَلٌ صَالِحٌ أُخِذَ مِنْهُ بِقَدْرِ مَظْلَمَتِهِ If he has good deeds, those good deeds will be taken from him according to the wrong he has done to others. وَإِنْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ حَسَنَاتٌ أُخِذَ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِ صَاحِبِهِ فَحُمِلَ عَلَيْهِ He has no good deeds, all the sins of, his, of the other person will be taken from him according to the wrong he has done. Sins will be taken from that person and loaded on this person's shoulder. Once I was sitting with one of the scholars. And at that time someone came and told him that there were people saying this and this against you. And when he started, when the person started reading things, it was so upsetting, you know, I was boiling. How could a person say anything like this? And about people like him. So after hearing all of this, he smiled. And he said, we don't hope for this. We don't look forward for it. But this is the guaranteed reward for us. Our salah, zakah, other things, we don't even know if they are getting accepted. But this is guaranteed reward for us. But at the same time, he said, we don't hope that people do this because, in other words, then we are looking for people to lose. That when people backbite us, then they are losing really. They are not winning. They are not earning. They are losing. So we don't look forward for people to do it. But if they do it, that doesn't upset me. Just like when someone said to <coughs> Al-Hasan al-Busri rahmatullahi alayhi, 
that I heard you backbited me. And his response was amazing. These people had these things in their mind, these hadiths, the message of the hadiths was deep in their mind. He says, brother, I don't love you that much. The person says, I know you don't. This is why I said you backbited me. He says, no. If I was to backbite anyone, I would backbite my own parents. Because I don't think anyone deserves all of my hard work and uh, my reward more than my own parents. And by backbiting, really you are giving the person your own reward. Why would I give it to you? If I would really would like to share all of this with someone, I'll share it with my parents, I'll backbite them first. Then I'll backbite someone else. Someone used to keep on talking against him. And he would keep on sending him some gifts. Sometimes he's sending him some dates, author. He will keep on sending him gifts. After some time he heard that that person stopped talking against him. And he stopped sending him the gifts. So one day that person came to him and says, Sheikh, you know, you used to send us some gifts occasionally. Now we are missing it. He said, you know, you used to send me your gifts as I was sending you some other gift. When you stopped sending me, I stopped sending you too. You were sending me greater gifts that I really could never pay you back for those. You were sending me your rewards. MashaAllah, you do Turaqa Salah and this is for Hassan al-Busri. You fast, this is for Hassan al-Busri. MashaAllah, what could be better than this? And I was just giving you some worldly things that have no value comparing to what you were sending me. This is a reality. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in other hadith, which is in Sunan al-Tabrani and al jamia al sagheer by Imam Siyuti rahmatullahi alayhi. أَرْبَ الْرِبَى إِسْتِطَالَةُ الرَّجُلْ فِي عَرْضِ أَخِيهِ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is telling us that there are stages of riba, of interest. Looking at other hadiths, we can see that there are many different levels of riba in one of the hadiths Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that when a person uses only one penny of interest and that, that get mixed with a lot of halal wealth, this penny is enough to ruin all the barakah from all of that wealth. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if a person is wearing some clothing that worth ten dollars for example, ten dinar, ten dollars, and only one dollar out of those was of haram. As long as this person has that dress on him, his salah, his ibadah, none of his things will be accepted. Because of that dollar of haram that is mixed with the rest of it. And then we know this sin for riba. Rasulullah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ O believers, even if you, in spite of being believers, if you don't give up the riba and dealings with interest, then be ready to have a war against Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in other hadith to tell us what type of sin this riba is. Normally if a person would compare, when we compare it, we may come to a wrong conclusion because we are looking from our angle, from our understanding. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, الْرِبَى أَشَدُّ مِنْ سِتٍ وَثَلَاثِينَ زَنِيَّةٍ Taking and dealing with riba, with interest, is worse than committing 36 times zina. And the least sin of that zina is when a person is doing it, which means, that person is committing zina in such a way that he's getting some major and making even that sin, the major sin, making it even worse, that وَالْعَيَازُ billah, وَالْعَيَازُ billah, someone commits it with his own mother. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, with all of the sin that that person is getting, the person who deals with riba is getting worse and more sin than that person. Just look at the hadith. 
And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith says, look, keeping now, we need to keep all of this in mind, that what type of sin that riba is. <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here tells us, arbar riba, the worst type of riba. The worst type of riba a person can deal with in his life is, istitalatu rajuli fi ardi akhi. When a person attacks the owner of other, other people. When the person is talking against other people. That's the worst riba. Just imagine. For people like, really these are some big lessons for people like us. When we look at people, this person's house is bought on riba. He's, all of his dealing is on riba. Now when we start looking at our souls, we may be carrying something more than that. Istitalatu rajul fi ardi akhi. When we are just attacking other people. When we are talking against our own brothers and sisters. And unfortunately nowadays the dream is, you don't just talk about any person. We would choose people who may be trying to be good people. They are trying to change and become a better people. Those are the people that we will choose to talk against them. A person in the club, that's fine, leave him alone. He is okay. A person out in the streets, never attends the masjid, he is fine. But he came to the masjid occasionally, now we will start pointing fingers at him. And a lot of time we hear people saying, look, he comes to the masjid and he does this. At least he comes to the masjid. Someday this thing will stop him inshallah. Who knows he will get better, at least he comes here. What do you expect? You want him to just stop coming to the masjid? There are so many other people that don't come to masjid. Why don't you then point your fingers at them? No, they're okay. People who never do the salah, we don't say nothing. Oh, look at him. He does this and he performed hajj. So what are you trying to say? He shouldn't perform hajj. Tell other Muslims not to do it, because they may do something like this in future. No, these are good things. Let the person be as good as possibly he could. Hopefully these things will stop him. Sahaba Ridwanullahi informed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, there is a person who just became Muslim. And he joins in the salah, he comes for the jama'ah also. But Ya Rasulullah, we know that he is in the habit of stealing. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never went into, okay, let's bring some witnesses, cut his hand, teach him some good lesson, or bring the people, let us now talk to him in the public. No. He said to Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi wa that the salah that he's performing, inshallah, will stop him from these things. Very important saying of Mawlana Ilyas rahmatullahi alayhi. When he used to say, that normally we are in the habit of talking about against people, like people's bad things. He said, by talking about bad things, then you are only spreading more evil in the community. Instead, talking about good things. Tell people that, mashallah, this brother, he performs salah, mashallah. This brother, don't say that he doesn't come for four prayers. Say he comes for fajr every day. He comes for one salah. So mention that good thing about him. Hopefully when he hear it, Someone would tell him, MashaAllah, everyone is talking so good about you, that you come for one prayer, you come for Fajr every day. Hopefully that will give him the encouragement to come for another prayer now. But everyone in the masjid was saying, he comes only for Fajr, then he never cares about Salah. Okay, I won't even come for Fajr. Arbar riba. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, this is the worst type of riba. This is the worst time of usury. This is the worst type of interest. When a person is talking against others. In other hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna min akbaril kabair. Look at the word akbaril kabair. There are sins that we say kabair. There are major sins. And as soon as we find out that this thing is considered to be a major sin right away, we will see ourselves staying away from it. But here Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is using the word akbaril kabair. It's one of the major sin and worse than the ma normal major sins. There are major sins and this is Akbarul Kabair. This is worse than those major sins. Is 
istitalatu al-mar'i fi 'ardi akhih fi 'ardi rajul muslim is when a person is to- uh, talks against another muslim brother when a person talks against another muslim brother this is worse than the major sins that we normally look at them. as rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in another hadith al-ghibatu ashaddu min az-zina al-ghibatu ashaddu min az-zina backbiting is worse than committing zina We stayed away from this, but just think how much of that sin we are carrying of something that is worse than zina according to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is why I had to give that introduction for some days so that we understand that we have one is our understanding of things. One is how we look at things and the other is how Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam look at them. Normally our understanding of these things is only from our point of view. No, this thing is bad. Things that we stay away from, normally to us they are very bad. And things that we, we get into and we do them, regardless of all of those hadith, still there is a valid reason for me to do it. <coughs> and this is nothing different than a person who is used to drinking alcohol. And when you present some pork to this person, he says, no, I won't eat pork. What do you expect? Do you want me to eat this? This is khanzir, this is pork, this is haram. So how about that alcohol that you drink? And he must have a reason for that, and he has an excuse, or at least to his understanding, this is a lesser, and that is worse, and he's staying away from major sin, that is eating pork. He's not doing that's the worst of a sin. According to the Quran, no difference. Another person, he may be eating the meat of dead animals. Dead animals, animal that is killed without the name of Allah. Any, any, any method of killing the animal, that is not approved from the Sharia point of view. That's maita, dead animal. Person eats that. You present alcohol, you present pork to this person, he won't eat it. But he's eating this meat. And he will have some reasons according to him, valid reason for him to do this. This is what we doing, we are doing, is no different than that. That riba, backbiting, hatred, jealousy, and talking against people. It's all going on within our souls. But if someone would present the other things to us, if we know that there is a person who eats haram and he comes with us, I don't want to even sit with him. I don't want to talk to this person. Someone will ask Billah is involved in zina and he comes here, kick him out. I have a reason for this, and that person has no reason for that. And that person, we talk to him, he will have his own reasons for that. So, this is general habit that normally people, it's nature, general habit that we have, everyone. That since that we get involved in, we always try to prove them to be very minor ones, or there is a reason and valid reason for me to be able to do it. And since that others are committing, they become very major ones. Now, after looking at some of these hadiths, how clear it is for us now that some of the sins that we get into may be worse than the sins that other people are committing outside there. The sin of this must be much, much more than the one that is being committed out there. But we look down at that, and for us, we are still very virtuous, and we are great people, and we are God-fearing people. Without going into too much detail, if we just quickly remind ourselves of what is our normal conversation when we sit with our families. What is the talk normally? What do we normally talk about? Do we talk about good things? Do we talk about good people and their good things, good deeds? Do we talk about sunnas, about sharia? Or normally, our talk is about people, how bad they are, what wrong they do, how people show off, how people are just doing things that are against Sharia. And we are through that. Husband and wife, stat, 
children are getting involved, they are growing up with these habits in our homes. They are growing with these habits. And when they grow up, this is part of their nature. They always would like to talk against people. This is part of their nature, and this is not only part of their nature. Unfortunately, nowadays, I don't know how I could put it in a nicer way, but it became a sign of being a good person that you keep on talking about all the other people that how bad they are. <coughs> this is when we are too good, then you have to do this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the right understanding of what the real sharia is. What is our responsibility? What are the things for us to do and what are things for us to refrain from? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfeeq to follow these instructions of the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are many more ahadith, inshaAllah. We will go into some other ahadith in our next sessions. الله أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله